Hey everybody, welcome to The Crit House. I'm Jeff Larson, and today on our program, we look at images from Edward Weston, Judy Dater, Richard Avedon, Sally Mann, and Larry Sultan. And those images today come to us from Polly Gaillard, who is the, uh, works with Critical Mass and Photo Lucida. Um, Polly, it is great to have you on the program. I, I have to say I have been a, uh, I, I have aspired to have my work accepted into Critical Mass ever since I heard about your organization. I got lucky this year and one of, was one of the 200, um, which I think will probably be the right, peak of my you. photographic, uh, uh, career. Um, but, uh, thanks for joining the program. It's nice to have you on uh, with us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, so you're, you are not only a photographer, but you are an educator and you have this now organization that you lead as well. Um, I do. Tell, tell us about um, you. Well, um, I don't have a lot of time to do photography anymore, no. so, uh, but I have been, uh, I started at 19 and I just fell in love with working in the dark room and, uh, I taught college photography for about 12 years. I even, I taught darkroom, I taught digital, I taught the ethics of photography, the history of photography, um, you name it. And I really loved teaching, uh, but I, I love the opportunity that I have now with Photo Lucida even more because I feel like I get to connect with more photographers and I get to see more work. Um, so I started in April of 2023 and ran uh, critical mass and it was, wow, it was a lot. And it was wonderful. I was on the pre-screening panel too. So I got to see the full gamut of everything that was submitted um, I used to enter critical mass <laughs> back when, um, I think one year I made the top 200 and then there was a time that I didn't. So I understand th those feelings that everybody has. I, um, would get that, uh, message from Laura Moya about congratulations, you made the, or you or know, not, unfortunately, yeah. or unfortunately, so I know what that feels like. I and I feel like I have a lot of empathy for photographers because of it. So, uh, so you had uh, this assignment to choose five images that had some meaning to you, whether your favorite images or the most influential. What did you What did you decide to do in choosing your five images? I think I selected those by the trajectory of my own fine art life. The images I felt somehow changed the way that I thought about photography or what a photograph could be or do or something, a different way of uh, seeing maybe. Yeah. Well, I love the images that you've chosen. So let's take a look. So... Edward Weston's bell pepper was, uh, even though I turned out not to be this type of photographer, uh, I was I was very young when I encountered this, and it was a very impressionable image for me because of the proximity of the camera to the subject, how close it is, the tonal quality, the fact that it it sort of looks like a female form from yep. the back. It And I, somebody gave me a copy of Edward Westman's day books. And, you know, I was this very young woman and I, I was just taken by the, uh, how he approached a subject, the serious quality of, you know, he would give a bell pepper the, you know, the time and, I was also very impressed by the fact that he would only purchase things to photograph his still lives that he and his family could eat because mm. he was a starving artist and he had three sons. And so a lot of the imagery was, you know, 
in his day books. It says, well, we could, you know, eat this later. So I guess it didn't seem like some extravagant expense. Um, so I, you know, tried to be Edward Weston for a little bit. You know, I have to say, you're the um, as as great of and a renowned photographer as Edward Weston is. You're the first person to show a, um, a Weston image as part of the My Five series, um, which is which is not. I mean, it's not surprising. I mean, because there are so many great photographs and there are so many great photographers. But uh, I thought you know he would have come up um, sooner. Yeah, I would think so too. A, yeah. Well, you're breaking new ground for the for the Crit House <laughs> on the My Five series. Your second image comes from Judy Dater, um, who um, I will admit that I do not know an awful lot about. So tell me about this and her and why this is here. Well, um, I know Judy Dater. <laughs> and so I moved to California, San Francisco Bay Area as a young woman. And I was fortunate enough to um, take some courses from her at UC Berkeley's extension in San Francisco. Her work, the trajectory of her work is is extremely interesting from this this particular image comes from a series of uh, self portraits that were done in Death Valley, I believe in the 1970s. But Judy's pretty much well, she's more well known for her portraits and this obviously isn't a, isn't a portrait, but her portrait work inspired me tremendously. This image has punctum for me because while she's turned the, the window on the horizontal, but there's something about this that could be, you know, very metaphorical and symbolic of one's life you know, pulling back the window to see what's really there. Also, the fact that the hands seem to be pulling so hard and seem to be struggling. So this image, it, it changed kind of how I felt uh, um, in my young mind, you know, uh, somebody that could, in a very, really simplistic image, this these levels of metaphor and and symbolism, and I just, I, I love everything about it. Richard Abaddon with your third image. Uh, what can you say? I mean, <laughs> uh, it's hard to pick a Richard Abaddon image, but I think I picked uh, this one because I also, in my early years in California, I did a series on adolescent girls and I photographed them much in the way that Avedon did, mm. not on white backgrounds, but on minimalist uh, backgrounds. And it's always the gaze of the this young woman gazing into the camera. I mean, I think that just because a person isn't smiling is it doesn't mean that they're sad. I mean, there's so many places between happy and sad and the gaze of this young girl is extremely captivating. And she's, she wants us to know something and, and she's confident enough to stand here in front of uh, this photographer. I think that Abaddon was a real master at capturing something. It it doesn't have to be the whole person. It might just be a facet mm -hmm. of who they are in that very moment. I just, you know, his work made me want to uh, to make portraits. Your fourth image is not wildly dissimilar of a young person looking directly <laughs> at the camera. This one's a, this one's brilliant. I just this was I love this image. Um, this series by Sally Mann from her immediate family, um, it really changed me. Also, I, I did a lot of research on, on Sally Mann. There had been such a pushback on her work and criticism and I yes. mean, they had threatened to, uh, confiscate her negatives, all kinds of things. But so I, I, I knew of her work for a very long time, but I was a mother of a young child. You know, obviously the person you look at is Sally Mann, but um, when you're a photographer, that is. 
Uh, I think, you know, I know the criticism that she had uh, received about even this image in particular, because it almost looks as if her child has, you know, has been punched or something yes. in the eye, but it actually turns out to be a gnat bite. So, you know, everybody's getting all upended, you know, what kind of mother are you? What kind of mother would take a photograph of their child? But I think if people are honest or women are honest that, you know, the things that we remember or want to remember about our children are moments that are unpleasant as, as well. I mean, yeah. you know, I... I took pictures of, of my daughter and, you know, uh, when she was doing asthma treatments and, and things like this, because this is the reality of being a parent. I felt that the work was very uh, brave and I felt that it was very honest. I mean, she's, she's picking out these moments of time and she's, you know, elevating them and they might not be the moments that you would choose or that I would choose, but bravo i mean yeah. they're just incredible well it's a, it's an interesting transition into larry sultan where people where larry is looking at his family and uh and documenting his family yes. in an so, intimate way as well i i'm just very interested in family photography and obviously with the sally man and with larry sultan as well I remember as a kid, I would sit on the couch and I would just pour through our photo albums. And um, there were, you know, it becomes this point where it's almost that the the photograph becomes more the memory than the actual memory is yes. in, in a way. But I think that what Sally Mann and Larry Sultan um, have, there's a similarity and there it's the person with the camera has the power. So Sally Mann, and it, it, it's more natural for a child, for a parent to have that power over a child, Yes, but it's not as natural for a son <laughs> to have the power over his parents. And I had also, my parents have both passed, but I had also done a project on my parents in their much older years um, and the difficulties of that. But this, I, this image just uh, really resonates with me mm -hmm. so much. I probably, because it reminds me of my own family. I mean, I can hear the conversation that's going on here. You know, the dad is like, you're taking too long with the camera, Polly. So he, he sits <laughs> down and he, you know, uh, watches the baseball game. But yet my mother would be, you know, standing there looking at me lovingly, waiting at, and never complaining, never saying anything. So it's, I love how this picture, even though the, the photographer is not in it, it really makes this triangle. Like, you know, he's here, the mother's there, the father's there, but um, I, it's just, it's a story. It's a story about the mother's relationship with the son, the father's relationship with the son, and the mother and the father's relationship. So I just, it's very powerful to me. Yeah. Yeah, the whole series is uh, is yeah, very really telling, is. and yeah. I and I have I have to say a lot of this conversation is sort of hitting close to home because my I just lost my dad a couple of weeks ago, but uh, um, who who would have also been uh, watching that game yeah. <laughs> would have been <laughs> not wanted me to take his picture either. So. Um, well, I tell you what, um, this has been just a great conversation. I um, I very much enjoyed. So you started off saying I don't know what I'm going to say or I, I don't have anything to say. You have a lot to say, um, and you said I it think all very it's well. The, the teacher in me coming out. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, Polly, um, such a pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us, yeah. and um, and thank you all for watching the Crit House. Thank you for having me.